Okay, so today's webinar, we're focusing specifically on ground mount projects in PVCAD. Um, these are a little bit different than residential um, and rooftop commercial just because of the racking and obviously we're working on land instead of a rooftop. So how we go about it is slightly different. Um, we are going to take questions at the end, um, but for now we're just gonna run through a project start to finish. So I have here a project that I started in PVCAD and we just use one of our standard templates here. And so as you can see, the first thing I'm going to do is set my location. And this is true for any project we're going to be doing. And I chose Golden Gate Park. It's in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Lots of big green spaces. Our map directly in PVCAD finds it here. Zoom in uh, however much you desire on the space that you're going to be using. And then make sure that download map pic picture is selected. We're going to be saving that image into our files and it directly scales and imports into our PVCAD window. So this is the space we'll be working with today. So using this image, we're going to start to outline our ground mount area. We always use polylines in PVCAD. Um, this is the kind of line that PVCAD is able to recognize. So use polylines instead of regular lines. And I'm just going to outline this green area that's in between the trees. And while we're using polylines, we're also going to outline any obstructions we have, um, any more specific installation areas, and we'll talk about those as well. So I'm just going to use these two trees here as kind of an example of obstructions within ground mounts. And then I'm going to separate my ground mount area into two separate installation areas. So today we're actually going to make an east-west facing ground mount array. So this will be our first half that will be east facing. And then the second installation area is going to be our west facing half. So under site objects is where we're going to start to define all of our polylines that we just drew. The first ones are ground mount outline. I've clicked ground mount outline define. And then you can see that my line has now turned yellow and it's labeled as GM1. We're then going to define our obstructions. So both are selected obstructions. Define. And now they're both yellow as well. And then when we select them, we can put in a height for each obstruction. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna make them the same height. My units are in inches, so I made these 150 inches each. And that's also gonna create a shadow path for both those obstructions. And then lastly, uh, we're gonna define our installation areas. Insula installation areas are really useful if you are working in a particularly large ground mount area that has racking or different oriented arrays, layouts, things like that. And so for our purposes today, we're gonna to do an east-west facing. And you can see those are orange, so you can tell the difference between installation and ground mount areas. So here we're starting to define our tables. Obviously, ground mounts usually use tables. We're gonna do three by 10. Typically, um, for ground mount, we use, you know, whatever the number of columns you have is typically the length of your string length. And so here, this is where ground mounts really specific. Um, we're going to, because we're using user defined, we need to specify our tilt angle, our ground coverage ratio and or our row spacing. Those are kind of one and the same, depending on what you're using. We put them in landscape and when we say make layout here, I'm going to define these as facing east. You can see that instead of laying out modules, I'm now laying out tables.
And these tables are all specified to the spacing we just defined. So um, there is a difference between that module frame gap and the actual spacing between the tables themselves. So we can see here these little gaps that were left out of tables. That's where our obstructions are. So they don't place any tables where we have obstructions. So now moving to our second side, this I've now faced west. And you, you can see that if your table doesn't start in your defined area, that it won't let you do it. So always make sure that you're starting within the boundaries of your either installation area or ground mount area. And there's our full west facing array. So if I've decided, you know, I really don't care that there's shading, what I can do is actually use add panels. Make sure you're in the correct subarray. Add panels. And you can actually override that decision to avoid shading. So I'm going to click on one of the modules and drag. And here we see that it's going to add in modules. Um, if you see that it's overlaying on another table, it's not going to add more modules on top of modules. It's a smart add-in, and so it recognizes there are modules already there and is adding to your already existing array. And then I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here. I was just playing with what kind of modules I wanted and where. And so going back to our original array right here, we're gonna start our electrical design. So one thing to do before the electrical design is I like to tell people at this point, this is when you wanna calculate your production. Um, especially with large ground mount arrays, it can get really finicky. As soon as you start wiring together, it's going to give you production specifically on what you've chosen to wire. And if you make one mistake, it will mess up your whole production. Um, if you do your production beforehand, it will be um, based on just the modules through PV watts. So it gives you kind of like a good baseline of where to start and what to expect for your production. So after we've done that, <clears throat> we're going to go back into the electrical layout. And I'm doing string auto in this case, as we said, um, north to south because they're facing east and west. And I made my string size 10 because my tables are 3 by 10. And when I select all of those uh, tables in my subarray, it automatically strung them in strings of 10. And I'm going to go back and do the same thing for subarray 2, which is my west facing array. Select string sizes of 10, string auto, north to south. I select all the modules I want to string. Select enter. And now everything is strung together. And especially if you're doing large ground mounts, this is a huge time saver. Um, everything is automatically done for you. You can do string manual. This is usually more of a commercial or residential feature. Um, but if you have kind of funky configurations, you can use a little bit of manual in there. But for most people, they're going to want to use string automatic. So now we're going to insert our inverters. And for time's sake, I'm not going to string everything here. I'm just going to do a subsection so you have an idea of what it should look like at the end. Um, any large scale design is going to be a bit tedious. And so in PVCAD, this is a slightly tedious part of having to string all of your strings into the inverters. That being said, we've already had huge time savers. So it still should take you, you significantly less time than previously to actually do the electrical design side of your project. But here I've put in roughly six inverters, one AC panel, and we're going to start to select our strings to put into our inverters. And I'm just going to hide the image here at this point so you can see easily our modules inverters. So the first thing I'm going to do is my source circuit conductors and select uh, roughly six strings to put into one inverter. Once those are selected, 
we're going to pick an alignment point for all the wiring and then the inverter we want to string them into. And that's automatically strung. And I'm just going to repeat those steps for two more inverters here. And obviously you'd be doing this for the whole project and you probably would be using slightly larger inverters. I'm using 10K inverters here um, just because that's what was automatically selected, but you'll probably be using larger ones, in which case you'll be stringing more strings into each inverter. And so here I now have three inverters strung and I'm going to use my AC circuit conductor con to connect those inverters to my AC panels. Now, oftentimes um, a lot of wiring configurations for larger ground mounts might use multiple AC panels or more intri uh, intricate uh, ways of connecting. Um, you are welcome to do that within PVCAD. However, for today's purposes, so we can automatically generate a single line diagram, I am using one AC panel and one AC panel only. This is one limitation right now where in order to automatically generate, there must be only one AC panel. However, if you're doing larger projects, there are workarounds for that, either um, generating first and then you know, customizing afterwards that allow you to work with multiple AC panels or whatever configuration is actually um, true to your project. So here we have our three conductors now strung into our AC. There's our summary with our production estimate from earlier. I'm gonna save my drawing and then in my PV CAD ribbon, I'm gonna click single line diagram. And it takes a bit to think. And then as soon as it's ready, it's going to appear just below your design. So remember, this is a subsection of our actual design. So we're going to see three inverters here. And one AC panel. And you can see it's six strings of 10. So it correctly identifies those. There are our inverters. And so when we're discussing customizing it, if you want to automatically um, create a single line and just do a subsection, what you can now do here is customize it and expand it to represent your full project. So all of these blocks have visibility states. So if I click on this little carrot here for my AC panel, I can actually add more inputs. So I'm just gonna double it here. I'm gonna give it six inputs. And then all I have to do is copy and paste my strings and inverters. And all of a sudden, my, string, my single line accounts for double of what it has. So this is one example of how you can customize and expand a smaller portion of your strung system. And this is um, really good if you're not looking to have to string everything on your project, but you do want a completed single line. Um, it's also applicable if your system is using more than one AC panel. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to customize um, whatever your system may be directly in PVCAD. And then obviously you would just use polylines in this case to connect your AC back into the inverters. And that's just a basic project start to finish ground mount in PVCAD. Oops. And if we come here, this is the actual completed project itself. You can just see here in our template, you're obviously going to be using your own templates. But this is just an example of ours. So all of our viewports here are actually smart viewports. So you can freeze and activate any layers in each viewport that you want. And it also auto populates all the information from the design we just created. So it also makes integrating your design into a template a little bit quicker and more simple. Um, at this point, we are gonna go through a few questions. Um, there are a few questions. So one of them we got was, um, can I use specific racking manufacturers for my ground mount projects? Um, if you've noticed, there are a lot of manufacturers integrated to PVCAD if you're familiar with using it on more residential or commercial projects. At this time, we have not integrated 
ground mount specific options into PVCAD. It is something we're working on and we're hoping to integrate it in the future, um, but it's not something that we've accomplished just yet. Um, it's in our pipeline though. And this is why we're also using, using uh, user defined in all these projects because it allows you to get very specific with your ground coverage ratio, tilt, and things like that without using a manufacturer specific option. Um, and I think we have one other question. So um, if you've noticed, you're able to string multiple strings at once into an inverter. Um, oftentimes people will try to string multiple inverters in once into an AC panel. Um, and as I mentioned, this is one part of the PVCAD that is still gonna take a bit of time. Um, still a lot faster than rendering it yourself in regular AutoCAD, but you must string each inverter individually into an AC panel. Um, so those are two smaller questions. Tell people if there's a chat window. If anyone has any other questions, they can type them into the YouTube chat. Another question from Keith. Um, what if the inverter I'll be using is not in the table? Can I add it? So we do have a database in PVCAD here, um, and you're able to add things to it. Um, the downside to that is if you're adding something customized, whether it's an inverter or a module into the system, um, you are the only person that's able to see that. So if you share the file with someone, it won't function correctly and it will also kind of mess up with your production estimates. Um, if it's not in there, what we suggest is just sending us the spec sheet. You can send that to support at pvcomplete.com. Um, and we usually, especially for modules, we're able to add them in usually within 24 hours. Inverters, if it's a pretty typical inverter, same goes. If it's something a little bit crazier or case specific, we'll reach out to you and, and talk about it. Um, but that being said, you can add it in a database, your personal database, but we recommend just sending us a spec sheet and we'll add it extremely quickly for you. Um, I think that's everything. Um, if you do have questions while you're trying this out or you have a larger ground mount project, um, always feel free to reach out to us here at PV Complete. Um, we've worked with lots of customers on much larger ground mount projects. Um, once you start getting into the multiple megawatt size projects, everything in PVCAD is still going to render. Just know that it's going to be a very large project. And so loading times for modules and things like that might take a few seconds. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're freaking out that something's taking a really long time to load. That's fine, especially if you're working on a 10 megawatt plus project. Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. And uh, we hope you have ground mount success in PVCAD. And again, feel free to reach out to us with any project specific questions.